Oh, I just want to remind everybody, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot over on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's absolutely no better time to get in on the action. This app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So you guys can go visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, and one of our official partners here on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, do we have a winning ticket? I do have a winning ticket today, Steve. What do we have? If you want to take tag board, it comes from Brady McBride. He put a five-leg parlay down on the Cavaliers Magic game last night and turned eighty dollars into two hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Nice. He Ooh. had Benchero fifteen plus points. That's Mitchell easy. two plus made threes. Uh, Mitchell with four plus rebounds. Benchero with six plus rebounds, and Garland with fifteen plus points. To me, Everything that hit. seems like a joke. <coughs> that's stealing. Listen, it seems like stealing until you miss one leg by half a point. You could ask Earl. Earl, Earl no, I know, yeah, but those numbers in particular, morning. like, those guys, See, my problem they is, wake up with those numbers. My problem is, I, I, I'm one of those, I want to take $5 and make it 1000 like that. So you're you're going too yeah. many legs, too many long no, shots. No, I'm not, no. I would never go more than 10 legs. That, two, that's but that's, a lot. that's, but, that's but about two, nine too many. But you got to <laughs> No, it's strategic. You got to start off with the guarantees. Like, this is guaranteed to happen. So my buddy that does that, <laughs> when he does 10, he lays 10, he picks four locks, and then he mixes and matches the six that are, in his mind, the long shots on the ticket. Yeah. So he mixes and matches a lot to cover his... Well, you know, you know, it happens and also when, give you more chances when you do it that way. When I do it that way, what I found out yeah. is the ones that I think is locks is the ones that miss <laughs> the, ones the that long miss. shots. Yeah. 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 All that I mean, like. yeah, it is it's really funny. And people are developing their own strategies. Some of them are better than others. Yeah. Some of them are a lot more risky than others, but the reward is certainly there is. if you can hit on those. All right. Uh, we talked about the gamesmanship going on with the head coaches, and this is nothing new. Obviously, it's been going on in the NFL for years. DTR is in protocol, but was back at practice yesterday. Mm-hmm. It, it, he's not playing, guys. Well, he, a- he's not going to play. <laughs> AVP said this morning he has one more box to check, and I have no idea what that box is. There was no specifics from AVP, but said there's one more box DTR has to check before he could be cleared from protocol. So. Yes, and that's true, but that's not so he can play. This that's just is to get all, out of protocol. All of the, yeah. end, the end game here is how they're going to play. It's the same thing in Jacksonville. When you look at what Doug Peterson is dealing with, you, have you ever had a high ankle sprain? Uh, I have not had a high one, but I've had one. That I had close. one. The doctor <laughs> said you'd have been better off breaking it, and I've heard that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, look, can he come back and play? Yeah, it is highly unlikely, particularly in their situation. You want him healthy for the end of the season and in the playoffs. You could jeopardize all of that now. If this were a ticket on on our FanDuel app, Mm -hmm. and it's a two-leg parlay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to bet the house that our starters for Sunday are Flacco and Bethard. And I can't come up with a logical reason why either team would go in the other direction. Can you guys? I I could not. Um, For the Jacksonville, like... This game doesn't mean that much, you know. Like it means they, less to them than it does to exactly. us. Exactly. To us, it's we're on a two game losing streak. We're in the thick of things. We're like the last seed in the playoffs right now, so we're really fighting. So you gotta come with a great game plan. If Jacksonville <coughs> loses this game, they're still first place in the division or in their division and they're still in the playoffs. So yeah. I they got Trevor Lawrence can sit out and they'll be they fine. They have breathing room. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. For us, Joe Flacco is the one that's practicing this week. Obviously, I know DTR practice on a limited basis, but it's the timing and still getting them plays. I, I just don't They're know. You're on day two of the game plan install, right? Exactly. I don't understand how you – this guy, DTR, he's a rookie. He's already been trying to get this playbook down, and you're telling me on a short week – So is Joe, though. Yeah, that's true, too. This playbook. But – Joe is a pro. Joe's been here. Joe yeah. understands, like, Joe went through a whole game plan last week. We even heard his coach say last week how much he enjoys getting a new install and, and going through the week with it. So, with DTR on a limited basis and Joe full participant, 
I think right now he's getting the timing with the guys. DTR got to come back and get that timing back. Because it's not like he was starting for – Two games. Yeah. You know, he was, two. You know what I'm saying? He didn't start for like six, seven games where he had the timing with everybody. He right. still got to redo everything again when he comes back. So, if until he clears it all the way, I'm rolling with Joe because right now Joe is getting those reps. Joe is in those meeting rooms. Joe's getting all the information. McNuggets? I agree it's Joe. But can I just play devil's advocate and make sure. the case for DTR just for the sake of this? Against – the Rams. They had one elite pass rusher in Aaron Donald, yep. and the rest of their defensive line was so-so at best. Mm-hmm. They had no one who had more than three sacks. It was pressure from one point, one guy you could really focus on, and outside of that, the guys that you thought you could win your individual one-on-ones with. Mm-hmm. Against Jacksonville, their defensive line is, they don't have that one guy in the same caliber of Aaron Donald, but they have the next four best pass rushers if you were drafting mm-hmm. pass rushers between the Rams and the Jaguars. Josh Allen, who we'll talk about in a little bit, has more sacks this season than Miles Garrett. Yep. Trayvon Walker was the number one overall pick last year. He hasn't fully figured out <coughs> how to put pass rushing moves together with his physical prowess, but he's an elite physical specimen mm-hmm. and has six sacks this season. Their defensive tackles have high pass rush win rates. They don't have a ton of sacks, but they're kind of forcing the quarterbacks to step out and lead into other sacks. So based on how Jacksonville's defensive line is constructed, I think that leads to DTR's mobility and escapability being a bigger factor. We saw Joe Flacco late in the fourth quarter against the Rams. When they did pin their ears back, he took a safety. He struggled mm-hmm. two straight well, completions after all, that third down. Those were all obvious passing it, situations. Yeah. I say, when, when, those are easy. Yeah, yeah. Those when are the Rams easy. were able to pin their ears back and get after yes. them. That won't be the case, I think, for four quarters on Sunday against Jacksonville. But I just think the way Jacksonville is able to get to the quarterback gives a little bit of a different issue and, and problems for whatever Stefanski wants to run offensively because you can't just funnel your offensive line to protect one guy. we got to cut off Aaron Donald. Mm-hmm. We'll live with the rest. Yeah. So DTR, in that sense, may be a little bit of a better option than Flacco, but make no mistake, if I'm making the call, if I'm Kevin Stefanski, Joe Flacco's my guy and I'm not thinking twice about well, it. Well, I hear what you're saying there, but actually, outside of Josh Allen, I'm not really worried about Trayvon Walker. Um, he's still got to figure things out, but Josh Allen is the key piece. He's, I think what he's saying is the the line as I, I, a team is really good. Is better than the, the Rams right. line as I, a team. I get that. Yeah. And what I'm saying is the defense attack, we did a good job last week on the pass rush. I mean, it was, wasn't to the end of the game where Joe Flacco was really feeling any pressure. Sure. I thought yeah. the offensive line played decently Very well. well. Very well. So, with that being said, coming into this game, Josh Allen is the key. Yes, they got some defensive tackles that's really good, but that plays into the strength of our offensive line. In you the middle. Batonio, po- uh, Ethan, Poches, and yeah. Wyatt Teller. Yeah. So, I don't think that the defensive tackle wins will be that significant. But that guy right there on that screen, that's the problem. That That's the guy that's got to get chipped, double teamed, and all of them. He's going to bring it. He's their Miles Garrett. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do think that – I know you're playing devil's advocate. And it's just for the conversation. But if Kevin Stefanski stands in front of the media and tries to sell that to the media, it's they're not going to buy it. Mm-hmm. The fans aren't going to buy it. In my view – this is, and you mentioned, it's interesting, you mentioned that this game is more important to the Browns, and I do agree with you. Mm-hmm. But consider this, if the Browns win outside of Jacksonville winning their division, which four weeks ago seemed like a slam dunk, it's no longer a slam dunk. Yeah. If the Browns win this game, that leaves the Browns and the Jags tied for the wild card. Mm-hmm. If someone were to pass Jacksonville, also it would give the Browns a big leg up because of the head-to-head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, although it is bigger for the Browns, I think it's marginally bigger for the Browns. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, this isn't. I don't. I still don't think it's worth rolling your starting quarterback with a high ankle sprain out there. Right. Let Lawrence get well. You do have the luxury of having at least a game at hand on the competition. Mm-hmm. But suddenly, if Indianapolis and Tennessee are to pick up wins this weekend, and Jacksonville loses, and you look at the standings, and it's a three-way tie. You've got four games to play. Nothing is, is assured for Jacksonville if that's the case, particularly because you don't know how long this is going to leave Lawrence on the sidelines. It could be two weeks. It yeah. could be four weeks. <coughs> it could be six weeks. Yeah. And they, they may sit him two weeks because Jacksonville has the Browns this week, the Ravens next week, but then they end the season with Tampa Bay, Carolina, and Tennessee at home. Yeah. <laughs> so they have three, three games towards but the I'll, end. I'll that you, Carolina game is, is easy. Tampa's going to be fighting for the division lead for their for their division title. It's an important game for them. And yeah. Tennessee, I just always frisky. I, I they yeah, are. They're, you know, frisky. I know we looked at Houston's schedule and they still have two left with the Titans. 
You know what Vrabel does down there. Vrabel's guys aren't yeah. going to quit. What? Where is those games at? Is it home or away? The, the Which, last game against Tennessee I know is home. Uh, Jacksonville. Oh, no, the final game of the season, I apologize, is in Tennessee. They are home against the Ravens and the Panthers at Tampa Bay at Tennessee. Well, as we found out yesterday, they, when we had when they the played Don reporter on from Jacksonville, they better on the you road. can reverse they're their better success. On the road. Yeah. They're far better on the road than they are at home. That's I can't why, explain That's it. why I asked, because I wanted yeah. to see if they was on the road. So, Tennessee, they should probably they win. Beat Tennessee 34-14 earlier this yeah. season. They're well, better than Tennessee, but yeah. you know what? You just can't do that game anymore in the mm-hmm. NFL. Yeah. Tops, I, have a, I have a question for you. This is another reason I would go Flacco and I want to think twice. And, Jay, you talk to Betsy Kling upstairs every day. You got the weather report. Yep. It's supposed to be windy. Like, very windy on Sunday between 20, 30 mm. mile-an-hour winds. If any quarterback in the entire AFC North right now, and Joe Flacco counts for that, is accustomed to playing through weird, weird. not great, yeah. windy conditions. That's why he was drafted. It's Joe, as Casey Keeler said that yesterday, it, it's Joe Flacco, and he's played not only in Cle- – he's phenomenal in Cleveland. We'll talk about that tomorrow in the McNuggets and five one, stats. Something like Nine that. and two in his career in Cleveland. Nine and his and numbers are, are very, very good. But a guy that has the arm strength to cut through the wind mm-hmm. – I mean, as a defensive back, like, did that actually make it? We hear it all the time that that's why the, yeah, the Bills drafted it. Josh Allen. Like, does, does the wind really affect passes in the extent that? Yes, it does. How was Beathard in the wind? You play, you, you guys were together in San Francisco. Well, the thing about Beathard is that actually this is funny. The season that Jimmy got hurt was the season that we didn't play one game in cold elements. Wow. It was unbelievable. It was the, it was the best season <laughs> of my life because I didn't have to worry about being cold. But we actually played every game warm, so I really can't answer that question. But he, he went to Iowa, so. Yeah, you would yeah. think he could handle the right. elements. And, and when you talk about, you know, Joe Flacco, I think the biggest difference between Joe Flacco and DTR is Joe Flacco brings that, that calmness to it. It's like when you go out there with Joe, it's like everything might be going crazy, and Joe will be like, Calm down, guys. This is what we're going to do. And you need that on the field because over the course of an NFL game, it goes up and down. It's really an emotional roller coaster. You need that one steady guy. That's why I think Kevin Stefanski is so good because no matter what situation is going on, he's the same. I feel that same way with Joe Flacco. I mean, his leadership on the field, the way he went in that game last week, we all watched it like, man, this offense, you know, we've been thinking all this time we need a mobile quarterback to do all these, these fancy things and run this Kevin Stefanski offense. And he's not mobile at all, and everything was still boom. Passes well, they, was crisp. They, they changed it exactly. to fit his skill set, exactly. and they did a terrific job, I thought. And I think, his and I think with him, he knows how to win games. DTR is playing to kind of not lose, essentially, because. Like I said, he, he knows he's the quarterback. He's going to be here, yeah. but he wants to get better every week. When you say that, you mean he's more managing it? Yeah. Trying to, you know, maybe we can get by with 14 points in the yeah, defense like rolls I, aces. I, I just feel like with DTR, it's like, yeah, I know. But I, with Joe Flacco, you can be an aggressive Yeah, mode. go ahead. Joe Flacco, because he's, he's going to do it. Yeah. Joe, Joe's like, listen, I know I can make this pass. I'm going to let it rip. I like what Casey Keeler, his, his college coach, told us yesterday on the show, is that he – the one thing I, he kept calling him unique, unique, unique. And mm-hmm. I said, what are the characteristics? And he goes very quickly answered this. He's not afraid to fail. Yeah. And I think I, you know, Brett Favre always used to say, you got to have a short memory. Mm-hmm. You can't remember the pick you just threw trying to squeeze one in between an impossible window. Yeah. And I do think Joe Flacco, I wouldn't call him a gunslinger so much, mm-hmm. but if you look at his career, the one thing that, I think has been a common, even going back to Pittsburgh when he transferred to Delaware, mm-hmm. is he has believed in himself in the micro, in game situations, mm-hmm. and then in the macro, one of the biggest onion moves in the history of onion moves for yeah. players mm-hmm. was what Joe Flacco did going into the final year of his contract in Baltimore when he had a pretty sizable offer on the table, said, no, you know what, I'm going to play this out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the last year of my contract which is rarely done, mm-hmm. and he bet on himself, and they won a Super Bowl, and he was the MVP. And I think right there is why I like him a little bit better. The big word, confidence. Right. He knows he can do it because he's he's done it in the NFL. He's won a Super Bowl, so he knows how to do it. Yeah. DTR is young. He's still trying to figure out if he's confident enough to do that. He's been able to make some throws, but he hasn't had a complete game where he was just like, oh, I know I'm, yeah. I belong here. Right. He's still yeah. trying to figure it out. And you talked about a gunslinger. I'm not giving all of the McNugget stats for tomorrow away, but 18.3% of his passes against the Rams mm-hmm. were into what PFF considered tight coverage, a tight window. The seventh highest percentage of any quarterback. It's one out of five. Only one turnover-worthy throw 
on those attempts, which means he was trying to fit him into tight windows, and he was placing the ball extremely accurately, yeah. which leads to a lot of success. I do, have a, I do have one more Flacco question for you guys, though. Is there any chance we're getting a little too far ahead of ourselves on the Flacco hype based off one game? Yes. Especially when the fourth quarter, <coughs> it was a great three quarters. The fourth quarter, not nearly as good, and obviously there are situational reasons why. Mm -hmm. The Rams knew they had to pass more. They understood it was a one-dimensional offense at that point, but he was really good for three quarters. The fourth quarter, not nearly as good. Mm -hmm. Maybe are we getting a little too far ahead of ourselves? I mean, yeah. I'm just asking. I'm just I mean, asking. that's just the fan in us. But I think that the reason that a lot of people are confident in him is because he was able to make those throws. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not every pass he throws is going to be in tight windows. But if you can make those, that's confidence. It's Hell like, yeah. all right, this guy looks good. The offense looks really good. Some people say it's one of the best quarterback performances we had this season. Earl which, said it was the best. Earl is crazy. Uh, <laughs> I don't hey, know. Look, Earl, uh, stop doing that. Jay, but, stop Jay, Jay doing that. Outside of Tennessee, Sean. Oh, okay, that's, but no, that's okay. <laughs> but other than that, this was without. I don't think without you any say question. One of. I, I think one of is one, yeah, one of and the best is two totally different yes. states. Exactly, but it's putting it in that upper echelon of quarterback performances. Here's the, you asked the question: Are we getting out of ourselves, either as a media or fan base or the coaches? I don't think we are, and I, I'll tell you, I, I almost think that the biggest detriment to this team is about to become one of our biggest advantages. Follow me. Nobody likes to change quarterbacks. It sucks. Yes. The rhythm is off. The timing is off. Your leader changes. It's like you're cutting the head off the beast and putting a new one on. Mm -hmm. However, it while it is sucked in the moment for the Bron think about the quarterback questions we've asked one almost every week we've had three <laughs> this weeks, year uh, four weeks all season where we yes, went into where a we Friday knew what was going on yeah four so while that is turmoil and disruptive and very difficult to manage in the moment mm -hmm. the good thing about it moving forward for this football team is they're used to nothing else but change yeah, yeah. and so that's why I say what's been their detriment in this quarterback revolving door is going to be their advantage because it is week to week. I don't think anybody, fan base, media, or the coaching staff, mm -hmm. is ready to pound their fist right now and say, it's Flacco or die. No. No one's ready to do that. We're doing that on a week-by-week -week basis. So let's put Joe out there. Let's see what he looks like. If he can duplicate or even improve upon what he did last week, mm -hmm. then it's easier for fans to start thinking, yeah, he's our guy. We've yeah. seen it twice. Let's roll with Joe. Against a, a pretty good defense. Y yes, yeah. what would be a good defense? But here's the thing. If Joe turns into week three 2022 Joe and he starts to precipitously decline in front of our very eyes. Go back to DTR. Then you say, it's okay. We'll go to the bullpen again and we'll bring DTR back. And this team, if nothing else, is used to changing on the fly. And I, wonder, I, I wonder how frustrating. Is it frustrating for, you know, the offensive line and the receivers to, <laughs> to have to continuously change the way? Because obviously with Joe Flacco, you block differently than DTR yeah. and Deshaun Watson. Or if I'm a receiver, I got to run my routes. It's sure. Just a slight touch different. It probably is frustrating, but Ty, look at this. They, they've had time with either of these guys now. Mm -hmm. And so Walker, if they do have Watson. to flip a switch and go back into DTR mode, you can, you they, they do just it. flip the switch and they go back into DTR mode. Yeah, it's true. And I think as this, this carousel keeps careening back and forth, Flacco's here for the ride for better or worse. I think this probably is one year with Cleveland. DTR is the long-term answer at QB2. Yes. We, we'd assume. Mm -hmm. If you had gone, let's, let's say DTR is healthy, just for the sake of this. If you had gone back to DTR, then he performs poorly, and you pull him again and put Flacco in, I don't think there's any going back to DTR for the rest of the season. That's but by, letting, this year. by yeah. letting Flacco just kind of ride out what he did against L.A. and seeing how long you could sustain that level of play. I mean, you go back to last season against the, uh, when he was in New York. Mm -hmm. His first two games were good, games three and four. Uh, went down the hill, and part of it's because the offensive line was atrocious in New York. Sure. But he's also, he was 37 or 38 at the time. You know, he's older. Yep. There may not be as, many, as much ammunition in the right shoulder as so, he so once had, but you got to let Flacco ride, and then if Flacco tails off, are you saying you go put a DTR back? Are in. you insinuating that what is it? Five games left. Yeah. In these five games, does he finish all five not games? Not a chance. Well, look, <laughs> the odds will I, tell I, you. I think there's not a chance. If no. you're if you're setting odds for that, be careful because the Browns haven't had the same starting quarterback yeah. for four straight games. <laughs> I guess you got a point there. And we're talking about 
what would be six straight starts for the oldest one of the bunch. <laughs> yeah. So, I'd, so, I'd be at, shocked. so at some point, DTR is going to be back out there as a starter. I'd be shocked if he I'd tell you yet. yes. Okay. Yeah. I'd be uh, shocked whether it's by DTR. injury or performance. So let's do this as we wrap up the quarterback talk. I, I just think that the DTR thing makes sense because of the protocol. Mm-hmm. Had he not been concussed, oh, he probably been out there. I, I kind of think that you would have had the advantage of making that decision Monday when you install the offense. Mm-hmm. But you didn't know, and you got burned one time earlier this year when you thought it was going to be one guy and ended yeah. up being mm-hmm. the other. Yeah. I think the coaching staff learned their lesson mm-hmm. and said, look, we have, to, we have to plan for Sunday with what we know on Monday. Yeah. And what they knew on Monday was... They didn't know what DTR's availability was going to be. Mm-hmm. So I think they installed the game plan for Joe. They're going to move forward. It's going to be Joe for this week. But after this week, when DTR is healthy and the coaching staff won't be able to tell the media, well, DTR wasn't available, so this was an easy decision. Next week, there's going to be a decision to be made. Do you think that one of the other gives the Browns a better chance, all things equal, moving forward? Like, would you rather close out the final four with DTR or with Joe Flacco? So what I would tell you is, from a from a standpoint, from strictly this standpoint only, at after this season, who's still going to be here? It will be DTR. So you got, but, and we, and we, the re, the problem with this season has been, we haven't had a back, a veteran backup quarterback. So take the last four games. For better or worse, well, he even gets, if it means you miss the playoffs. For better or worse, no, I just for I, better I, I, or I worse, not, no, that's you got to get that man ready. ready. You, you got to get him ready. Bad. That's, that's bad. So logic. He, what you is, can't what punt, is his record? You can't punt on the season. I don't care. DTR about that. is what? So, one so you're going to sell to your fan base, we missed the playoffs, but I want to give you a silver lining, guys. If Deshaun gets our backup quarterback is going to be ready next year. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Ty. Come on, Ty. This Sunday tells a lot. Yeah, but Ty, you, you, are within reach of a playoff position. If they, You're currently sitting let, let in me a playoff ask you this. position. Okay, Jay. You go for broke let me, for that playoff Let me ask position. y'all this. You're not thinking about next year's backup quarterback. Wait a minute. Let's think Jay, about, I'm with you. Let's think about this. Let's do it. Let's think. If the Browns don't make the playoffs this season, yes. how many people are going to be upset? A Everybody. Lot. No, they're not. Rightfully so. No, they're not. Yes, they you will. Because they're going to say, well, the Browns overcame a lot. This no, listen. So, the no, Browns, doesn't matter. They, they were cute. Time, let's do the mental gymnastics to they, get that they, ball. They went through four quarterbacks. We're currently in the playoffs. And they, they missed it by one game, and it's just it's unfortunate, but we understand. No, it's going to that, that, That's what will happen. It's going to That's it, what it people will say. Suck. A lot of people will be like, we went, it was a magical season. No. They did a lot of great things. They overcame a lot. But You're crazy. I know Tyus doesn't drink. Injuries. He doesn't do drugs. You're You're telling you, that's what they're gonna say. Don't put someone in your crispy Watch. Morning, bro. If they look, if they don't make the playoffs, that's what everybody gonna say. Have you Today seen our? Have, have you seen our fan base? Is legal in the state of Ohio. Put it in the chat. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be upset? Poll it. If the Browns the fans, don't they're make gonna the, be upset if, if we the Browns miss the playoffs this year. Poll it. I bet you it's eighty percent yes, twenty percent no. Poll it. It's gonna be a hundred percent yes. Because listen, it's not just the Browns. Then that's unreasonable. When no. have you known Browns fans <laughs> to be like, that's cool, man. We're good. But it's not just the Browns. Um, Joe Burrow's out. The year Justin Herbert's year been terrible this year. Got hurt. It messed up the shoulder. You know, they, Baker. Baker? Yeah, yeah, Baker never pissed off the fan base. No, they never the year got before that, Baker. they were in the playoffs and they were – a fourth and long but I'm saying, from making it to the FC Championship every, game. Everybody knew after, once Baker got hurt and continued to play, it was like, we ain't going to the Yeah, playoffs. and I think the general mood of the fan was like one of acceptance and understanding. <laughs> I'm having Earl mark this down for like worst take of the year. Yeah, yeah thank, put it thank in, you. Put, thank it, you. put it down. Go ahead.